if you're okay with it, what I'd like to do is three separate things. Number one, I wanna break down this section. I wanna break down the area where you're going to be looking to buy your home. And I wanna break it down two different ways. The typical way, which is counties, and then the untypical way, the one you're gonna see for the very first time today, is in zones. And these zones are how people operate within Delaware and how people outside of Delaware kind of view Delawareans within those zones. There's different income brackets, there's different job opportunities, different forms of entertainment, different school districts, different pros and cons for every area of Delaware. And that's why I'm making this together. So let's go ahead and jump over to this view real quick. I'm gonna shift over to this side to kind of break down a uh, not picture perfect dimension of Delaware. Top gets a little flat there, but broken down in two different ways. Most common way you're gonna see Delaware broken down is by county. And you'll see these orange lines right here, right around where those county lines are. And those break down into these three respectively from top to bottom. The top county, here to here, we have Newcastle County. This is our largest in population, smallest in land size. Interesting one. Then we have Kent County, which is our middle section of Delaware. Now here is where we're gonna have Dover, we have areas of Smyrna and Milford, and the Dover Air Force Base is a popular area here. And that is Kent County, right here in the middle. And farther south, in a similar amount of population to Kent County, we have Sussex County, largest in form of land mass and popular because we have things like the beaches and other things that people view as a stereotypical Delawarean, which we'll get into. But with those counties, what are you really getting? Now, I wanna kinda go through the demographics of each county. With that being said, I'd like to start from Newcastle County. It hosts the most people. We have over 400,000 people. It will be our first county to hit a half a million people. It also has the highest amount of income per household. It also has the most jobs, the most homes, the most restaurants, the most things to do. It has the most people. So obviously it's gonna have the most of a lot. So the number one thing, and I got my notes on the ground because when it comes to numbers, I don't wanna mess this up. We got from the Census Bureau, all right, we got an average household income of $85,309, meaning every year households in Newcastle County on average are making that, or on median, I should say. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means that this is actually gonna be probably out of the three, the highest per household income, and we'll show the specifics, but it is the highest per household income county that we have of the three. Attractor wise, actually kind of funnels into that. Now, if we have a county that has more income than typical than other counties, usually it's because that area focuses the job market. And that's exactly what's a big attractor for Newcastle County is the people who are not, and I was about to write another word, I wanna be very specific. They're not necessarily coming to Wilmington, they're commuting out of Wilmington and these other areas above the canal in the Newcastle area and then the Middletown area as well, which we'll get into. They're commuting to Philly and the Maryland areas like Annapolis and DC and Baltimore even. They're using Newcastle as an area to live in that isn't Philly or Jersey or New York City or Baltimore or DC, these expensive areas and choosing to live here and commute out. That's a big attractor for Newcastle County. Another one, and we'll skip down one past foods and things to do, T2D, by the way, if you're wondering what T2D spelled, uh, spelt out. The schools are extremely popular up here. Almost every single one is top tier. You have Red Clay, you have Brandywine, and then you have Christiana and Colonial. I'm not sitting here and ranking them, but the way that I read them is probably how most people would rank them, if that makes sense to you. And do your own research on that. As far as food and things to do, Newcastle County primarily too, and we'll get into these zones right here, this one, above the canal, so much opportunity for things to do and food and with a growing area of the south side of Newcastle, this zone two area continually growing, I see that over the next decade that Newcastle County takes and keeps the number one spot for food and things to do in Delaware. There's a lot of people, and we'll get into the zones, that treat zone one like home and won't go anywhere else. We'll get into that. Right now, I'll stick to counties. What are the hot spots in Newcastle County? Now, for those listening right now, like what, what's considered a hot spot? I wanna give you the advantage. I wanna treat you right now as if you're a client, and, and I'm your agent, and I'm gonna give you some real estate advice as best as I can, all right? And in doing so, a lot of my clients will ask me, the savviest ones will be like, Zach, where's 
where's that spot no one's really talking about too crazily right now? It's not super hot, but it's going to be a hot spot. It's going to grow for one reason or the next. And now I want to share some of those with you. So hot spots for Newcastle. I got a B and I got FF. For the B, I want to go ahead and skip over that because I actually I want to stop with this one first. The first one is Fairfax. All right. Fairfax is an area that I like because it is right in the middle of all of the conglomeration, all of the population, all of the fun growth in the above the canal sector of Newcastle County. Now, when I think of above the canal, which is like right around here, I'm thinking zone one. Zone two Newcastle area, you also have areas that are hot spots, Middletown, Odessa, Townsend. No one's going to not speak, uh, point you that direction, I, I should say, because it is a great area that's growing. But everybody knows that area is growing. Middletown is a mecca for growth right now. So what I'd say is our hot spot, our area that maybe people aren't talking about, would be Belmont and Fairfax. Do your research into them. I only want to kind of skirt along some of these things to give you an opportunity to hear something that might pique your interest and pique what you're looking for, and then we can dive deeper into it. And by the way, at any point you want to discuss anything we're discussing in greater detail, leave a comment below or find us on Instagram or Facebook, Zachary Loft, our Loft pages. Ask anything, and we'd be happy to assist you with that relocation kind of query you have because we've lived here and maybe you haven't. So let's go into Kent County. And Kent County, again, is our central county. Median income, got it right off my notes, you'll see, is going to be a bit lower, coming in at 69278 That is significantly lower, about $15,000 in difference between Newcastle and Kent County. Kent County, those top attractors are what drives some of that median income. It's the medical field and the Dover Air Force Base. Medical side of things and the military side of things, the two big M's, big movers in Kent County and equate for a lot of the new people that circulate their way through our great state. People from out of state for being in the nursing program, surgeons, doctors, we got new medical facilities popping up all over, as well as the Dover Air Force Base. You got people every two to three years are going out somewhere else and someone else new is coming in to take their place. So that area is constantly circulating. With food and things to do though, it's not just Dover. I love and absolutely hate that it doesn't get as much love as a Milford, or as a Dover, I just said it, is Milford. Milford actually shares this line down here between Kent and Sussex County, but Kent County claims it. And for the most part, it's one of the quickest growing cities in the entire state. I actually had to sit down with the mayor of Milford. His name is Archie Campbell at this time. He's a great man. And he said, actually, they had a meeting yesterday and with the updated 2023 numbers, they literally are the current fastest growing city in all of Delaware. So if you wanna look at overall hotspot opportunity, could just be Milford for the entire state. But with that being said, also I'm biased, I live in Milford, love that area and fully behind the fact that it's gonna keep growing. You got a great district there in Milford, working back into the Felton areas and it's kind of our, uh, our rural spots. You got Lake Forest. Up north right here, we got the Smyrna School District. And here throughout the middle, we have CR and Capital, with CR being Caesar Rodney. Caesar Rodney is like the sought after Kent County School District. Let's dig into though what the hot spot is, because that one is a little controversial. And maybe, maybe I should sit on it a little bit, but I, I love this hot spot because when talking about, hey, what area could I go to where my home's gonna be worth more in five years? The school district's gonna have more funding and better opportunities in five years. I'm close to everything I need to be close to and my lifestyle, I wanna verge on the small town vibe, but I don't wanna be in, in bumpkin nowhere. This is where this hot spot comes in. I was raised right on Main Street. It's got a great spot right on the corner for a subway. Hey, but it's also getting a lot of commercial upgrades. It's Felton. It's a small town in Southern Kent County. You're right over here off of Route 13. And it is a growing area that I see a lot of potential for. And right now, a lot of bang for your buck. You can get that acre of land. You can get that fenced in backyard at a decent price point still in this Southern area of Kent County, like a Southwest side. But let's get into Sussex County. This is honestly what some people only know about Delaware is really these two sides of Sussex County. Because on the Western side, we got, you know, the banjo playing, people out in the, in the farms and the fields, like do, 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 That's what people think about Delaware. And, and that's really this side is where that lives. And then we have this side, the, the Eastern coast. We got the beaches. Some people will literally only come to Delaware 
for the beaches. So this is what Sussex County has largely become popular for, the retirement side of things, and it's also home to some of our biggest farmland areas. A lot of our vills, a lot of our uh, boroughs, Gunboro, Millsboro, Dagsboro, like all those down south. So with Sussex County, the median income, though, you'd think is going to be because it's hosted with retirees who don't have a typical 12 month income usually, or if they do, it's a retirement slower. And then we got the farm side of things. You'd think it would come last in median income per household, but it's actually dead middle pretty much in second at $75,400 per household. Top attractors already wrote it down. It's the beaches and those small towns. Remember I said Felton, if you don't want bumpkin, if you want a little small town vibe, but not crazy, Felton's great. If you do want farm and small town vibe and there's 18 people that frequent the hardware store down the road, like th this area over here in Sussex is for you. That's where you'll get that. Food and things to do, growing options all around. I was honestly running out of space down here. I could have wrote a lot because between Bridgeville, Georgetown and areas like that, lots of mom and pop restaurants, so many joints there. And then if you go down to the beaches, just we'll get that when we talked about the zones but there's so much to do down at the beaches, food, entertainment, I'm, I'll get into it, I wanna save it. Let's look in the schools, we got Cape and Indian River being the two biggest school districts down south, and then Hot Spots. Hot Spots was a difficult one for me on this one because I thought to myself, where would the spot that no one's really talking about be? I already gave Milford to, to Kent County, so what I wanna give, or Milford and Felton, Hot Spot here, I wanna give to Milton. Milton is an area that on our, you know, our TikTok feed, which by the way, we have over 1.6 million followers on that at Zachary Loft. Um, we get so many commenters, so much engagement when we make content around where's the best place to be? Where's the next up and coming city? Where's your favorite spot right now? And so many people are saying Milton. So many people are saying that's the underrated spot. That's the fun zone. That's where a lot of fun, uh, fun and uh, growth is happening. I'm also gonna point out to the other side because Milton, you're right in this area. Seaford, you're over in this area. I love Seaford. Seaford's getting an Amazon uh, plant. They're getting much, much money from the tax, <laughs> much money. They're getting a ton of money from things like taxes, they're growing, and they have job opportunity popping up. I love Seaford as an area of growth as well as my main hotspot of Milton. And let's just summarize that real quick. Newcastle County, Kent County, and Sussex County. These are our main three counties and how they break down. Stats for each one. Now what I'd like to do is take us over into zones. Now again, zones aren't going to be something you're gonna see on a map. But for you, as a savvy client, like I said, I wanna treat you like a client of ours here at Loft, I wanna point you the direction of how Delawareans view Delaware. So when we look up at zone one, we see this area that's above the canal. You'll hear that phrase a lot, above the canal. And when you hear that, it's because they're literally sitting above, you guessed it, a canal. So zone one's breakdown over here as we jump over into this camera, the top section you need to know about is you are above the canal. And a lot of people who live there are going to live and die by that fact. A lot of people are never going to go below the canal. They're not going to do anything below the canal except maybe go to the beaches. So for people that live up here, a lot of people live and die up there. The other side of things is, like I said earlier, we get a lot of the Philly and New Jersey commuters, people who don't wanna spend big Philly money or big Jersey money, and they want to have a section of, their, uh, of, of dirt that they can call their own and a home they can call their own. So they, they come to Delaware to look for that option. In this area, zone one, you're looking at a home price point between about four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. That's around your median range area, and you got all of Delaware's mountains in the top left area of zone one, which are few. You got some of our best golf courses and incredible eating. High area of net worth as well, so you'll have a lot of whole food options, more upscale restaurants, and zone one overall, like I said, is most people—not most people, I'll say—but a lot of people's only zone is if they live in zone one, they stay in zone one. Now, I wanna go into this point real quick because this is a big one for zone one, is that if you were to go into zone one right now, and this is for all my people living in New Jersey, if you went to Delaware, you went to Wilmington above the canal with 60 grand, 60 grand that you're making every single year, if you made 60 grand in Delaware, you'd have to make 96,000 in Jersey to live the same lifestyle. 
okay? That's a huge jump. And this zone offers you the opportunity to be near Jersey without having to be in Jersey. Now, I mentioned two hot spots over here for Newcastle County, uh, over, over on this side, Newcastle County. I mentioned Belmont and Fairfax. Now, both of those fall into zone one. I just wanna be very clear. Both of those fall into zone one, but I wanna give a bonus hot spot, all right? I wanna give a spot that reps our name and no one even talks about it. If you've ever watched a rom-com where like there's this big city guy that's gotta go to little city and fall in love with, you know, little town, you know, woman who works the fish shop, it's, 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 it's in Delaware City. This is our little river town. This is our little small town vibe you can get in Newcastle. It also sits right on the coast. And so it's not a beach, it's, less no tide and you're, you're getting more of that slowed down vibe without having to actually physically pay the money to be at Rehoboth, Bethany, Dewey, any of the beaches down south, which we'll get into. So that's the bonus hotspot. Let's get back over into our zone camera though real quick and jump into zone two. Zone two, for the most part, Christiana, Middletown, Odessa, towns. I won't even include Christiana because Christiana is actually above the canal and that's where our, our mall is and that's Probably the most important part for most people about Delaware is our Christiana Mall, but zone two is where you're gonna get a lot of opportunity for a lot of different things. Let's go over to zone two over here. So on this side for zone two specifically, we have schools being the biggest attraction point. We have so many people that wanna to go to one place and one place only. They wanna to go to Apoquitamic, A-P-P-O, Apoquitamic. It's called Apo and it is the Middletown choice in schools. A lot of people flock to that area simply for that reason, as well as the area that we brought up for zone one, relocation. A lot of people will relocate to Middletown and then keep their job in Baltimore, keep their job in Philly, because they're able to live in a place that doesn't have Philly costs while keeping their Philly income, which makes complete sense. Happens a lot here. It is also currently the fastest growing zone in DE. Now again, you're not gonna find these zones on any map on Google, but if you looked at all five of these zones and you said, hey, which one is growing at the fastest pace, it would be zone two. Zone two has so much new construction and frankly, we have a lot of people that are moving from places like Florida, Texas, uh, even a couple from Vegas right now, a few different clients that are coming over to the East Coast, they're choosing Delaware, and they're choosing these areas like Dover and Middletown and Smyrna because they feature one key variable that makes it very easy for them to relocate, and that's new construction. Because with new construction, you can get them to start building it a year out, nine months out, six months out. You have a, a timeline in place. And if you're looking to sell your other home, settle up with your current job that you're at, whatever it may be in the moving process, it's good to have a flexible timeline that's also a bit out. So a lot of our people relocating choose this zone and choose it for new construction because you can also get new construction for under, oh, if I can get my marker to work, this is not the time for it to die, we can get it for under 500,000. Now, new construction in a lot of areas throughout the country, you're coming with 600, 650 minimum to get things started. Middletown, quite honestly, there's $400,000 options. You have options for new construction that are not going to break the bank, but at the same exact time, if you want to utilize and flex your bank, you have options all the way up to the millions with places that are actually going to get you tons of land, which is hard to find out there because there's lots of new construction going on, and a lot of size in the home. We've listed some beautiful properties in the millions in the Middletown, Odessa area, more the Middletown side, so there, there's room and range for whatever you're looking to have built. And not to mention, any home that gets built is eventually gonna sell to somebody else, so there's also resale opportunities for those homes. And the last big easy thing for Zone 2 is the central location and ease of travel. I'll say, this is something that a lot of people living here think and like, but quite honestly, if you live in Dover, you're near 13 and Route 1 and you're centrally located. If you're in Milford, you're near Route 1, Route 13, and you're centrally located. And if you're in Middletown, you're same. So it's, it's, it's something that's definitely a benefit to there, but this is something you could probably carry in the most of the zones of Delaware. So let's go back to the zone graph over here because zone three is one that we need to focus real fast because zone three is where the people who feel they repped Delaware the hardest live. Like anybody who lives in zone three, which you see kind of does a little wrap around zone two and avoids it, 
are the ones that believe I am Delaware, I am 302, because you know it has a lot of our homegrown areas, it's got our capital city, the Air Force Base, the Monster Mile, comes down through Milton, gets all the way down into Ocean View. It's got a lot, don't get me wrong. But with that being said, we'll come over here, it also has some real pros to why somebody moving into Delaware may want to look into it. So with this, we have basically all of Kent County. We have areas like Dover, Frederica, Camden, Magnolia. Going farther south, we have Milford. We have Greenwood getting in the Milton. You can go all the way down and through Sussex County, avoiding the beaches and the coast and the, uh, the farm areas. And you can see all these towns, all these areas where you can get a solid deal and you can get a tax bill that is under $1,500 per year, not per month, Jerseyers watching this in disbelief, it's per year that number is. You put that into your mortgage payment, it's an extra 510 bucks or 110 bucks a month, an extra $110 for your taxes. You're not even going to notice it, especially if you're coming from a PA, New York, Vermont, Maine, New Hampshire, New Jersey, where your tax bill is crazy. If you're in Jersey, it's the number one tax bill in the country, not the good number one, like the bad number one. So with that being said, where are the hot spots? You got all these people repping Delo, like, like look at all this. You got all this area over here, up and down, and all these people think they're the best. People from Dover, like Dover's the best. We love Dover. People from Milford, we love Dover, or we love Milford. <laughs> people from Milford love Dover. People from Milford love Milford. People from Milton love Milton. So, so where's the hot spot? Where do I, where do I work my way in? And well, that's just it. It's, it's my two favorite M's, and I've already mentioned them before. It's Milford and Milton. I'm not one for spreading out uh, too much joy. I, I want to center you in on where the hot spots really are. So yeah, I know I mentioned Milford as a hot spot and something within our counties. I know I've mentioned Milton as an area that a lot of people rep and love. At the same time though, these two areas are growing. They're increasing in population. They're increasing in the amount of businesses they have, more restaurants they have. Some people don't like it, but more weekend traffic and more little pop-up businesses. Like when I say pop-up, I mean, it's not McDonald's. I mean, yeah, Milford just got a big Buffalo Wild Wings and that's great, but downtown area is getting a lot of mom and pop joints and a lot of places with boutiques and, and different unique ideas, not just a place to get pretzels. So with Milton and Milford both taking a unique, artsy, modern approach to the growth of their downtown, I'd say these are two huge hot spots that you can hit within like the 302 belt of Zone 3 of Delaware. Let's go back over the Zone 4. Zone 4 is our controversial one, all right? I gotta be real, Zone 4 is at war. And what I mean by that is you'll see this star. That's where Hoboth. That's really where all the beaches begin. We have our, our Cape Henlopen side of things here. Very underrated beach, by the way. Cape Henlopen State Park, also a great state park, and where Joe Biden fell off his bike, fun fact. So if you go down, you got Rehoboth, then you got Dewey, and then you got the bridge into Bethany, and so on and so forth down the coast. These properties come with a price point increase, go figure median in this area, you're in the 600s more than likely. Now you get closer to the coast, closer to the water, you're paying more. And we even got a couple bays down here that can give you water availability, water visibility, access, without having to be on the actual sandy shore of Delaware. Why is this area controversial and why is it at war? Let me answer that simply with drawing a little bit more on the board. So actually I actually want to grab my, my purple marker because I feel it means a little bit more business. So zone four currently is at war with zone three. Zone three and zone four are fighting for this area right here. This area right here, and even a little bit more up the coast right now, are being fought for like nobody's business by the people that are wanting this area to be what they want it to be, versus what Delaware three, zone three I should say, wants it to be. Zone four is currently winning. Zone four is currently winning in the fact that more homes are being built, more neighborhoods are getting uh, permits built out for them, and frankly, more people are just moving into these areas with the intent of being near the beaches. Go figure, if you're moving into this area right here, just outside of the beach area, that you want to be at the beaches and in the beach area. So it's not that crazy of a thought. What is that crazy of a thought is the zone threeers wanting it to stop. They want the new construction to stop just off of Route 1. They want homes to not be built up in the Harbison areas and up north, even past and north of Milton, there are homes being built. And there's a lot of locals that don't have a great take on that or aren't really fond of it. 
But if you are a local and you see the fact that more homes are gonna be built and more people are gonna be brought in at a higher price point than typical, that's gonna be a benefit to Delaware. And frankly, if you're one of those people who's trying to get in on this area, this is only gonna expand. This war right here, I'm telling you how it ends. Money wins. It's gonna keep expanding. There's builders that are gonna keep building. There's restaurants that are gonna keep restauranting. There's things that are gonna keep getting done to make this area even cooler as it goes on. Because as we go over here, zone four is a Mecca. And a Mecca for what, you might say? It is a Mecca for a great L word, leisure. And the reason it is that is because it's a big retirement zone. So many food options, a lot of places you can go on a Wednesday at 3 p.m. that are gonna give you some fun. They're gonna give you something to do. There's golf courses, there's wineries, there's pubs, there's food from bars and grills that you wouldn't even know were restaurants from the outside looking in, like all the way up to sushi and seafood and steak and high-end stuff. You got it all here. You got boardwalks, you got Fun. So that's why it's the Mecca for leisure. It's got fun things to do. You can go out on a boat if you want. On a Thursday, why not? You're retired. So many people are coming to Zone 4 to do just that, to retire, to knock their shoes off, put their toes in the sand, and live the good life. And so with that being said, I'd say that it's Vegas' favorite county in all of Delaware. Now what the heck does that mean, Vegas' favorite county? Well, I imagine it like this. If Vegas, which they like making money, right? had to put a bet on one of our three counties as to which county was going to grow the most. It'd be tough. It'd be a tough, uh, tough bet to make. But if I broke it down, and I said county here, I guess I should have said zone. But if you broke it down in the zones and you said, hey, which of these five zones do you think is gonna grow the most and produce the most results? I would say it's easy to look at zone four as the best bet because it's producing the highest level of income into our state because higher income level people are coming in as well as the fact that it's actively creating more properties on dirt that's available. Newcastle County doesn't have that. Newcastle County, especially above the canal, doesn't have much dirt available for building. So if I'm looking at where do I want my money to be so it grows, well, let's go to the area that already has the highest median price point in Sussex County or more specifically, the beaches in zone four. So Vegas loves Loves it. Hot spot though, you're gonna love this. If you're looking to be near the beaches, let me break this down for you simply. These beaches all the way up the coast right here, these are beaches that are not gonna have wakes, they're not gonna have a lot of hubbub, they're not gonna have outlets, they're not gonna have anything that you equate to being a beach town. Now, through here in this area, you do have a couple opportunities, one of which is my favorite opportunity, but up north you got Pickering Beach, and then you know down south closer you got Slaughter Beach, and even here in the middle you got other beaches and Woodland Beach up north, but the beaches that really matter start right here and go down, except for one for my people trying to get a beach home without breaking the bank and it's a little beach that's just before the canal over here and still technically in Sussex County. It's a little beach called Broadkill Beach. I am a big fan of Broadkill Beach. And in fact, if I could summarize or shrink down the bedding area for where Vegas is allowed to look at, and if it was allowed to go more niche than zones, it might look just at Broadkill Beach because they're officially running out of sand to build on. They're also an older beach area that has not been developed as much over the past decades. So there's a lot of homes in there that are getting redone. A lot of old shacks that are getting modernized and a lot of homes that need work getting the work they need because people are believing in the area. And guess what? When you look at Delaware and you look at that flat coast, it's been built, it's been renoed, it's been taken care of. There needs to be more. And so they're going up the coast more and more. And that's where I see Broadkill Beach and our beaches as a whole as an opportunity because people are moving up the East Coast to find more and more opportunities to buy beach property. Broadkill Beach is currently that Mecca that, uh, I said Mecca because I looked at it again, but our bullseye for where the opportunity is, where the hot spot is in this zone. And let's break it down into the last one, zone five. Best chance for a home under what price? We'll see in a second. Zone five over here is typically what we will see our people from outside of Delaware envisioning Delaware as being. Howdy y'all, bing, 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 The joke I made earlier, same thing. Zone five, that's where our rural areas are. That's where our small towns are. It's where the farms are. It's where you could see a cow crossing the road. I've seen it a couple times. 
uh, I saw a pack of mini horses crossing the road. There's a, there's a farm out here that has bison. There's, there's a lot, all right? I think there's a camel somewhere in that area too, regardless. Uh, Delaware's small enough that you know where all the local small farms are. But also, Zone 5 is your best opportunity. Your best opportunity for a home that's priced under priced under 300000 And you know what? Delaware as a whole was probably a lock for that three years ago and before. Now, though, average in Kent County is 323000 Average in Newcastle County is 348000 And average in Sussex County with, with that beach and new construction involved, over 400 k So getting under 300 k becoming more increasingly difficult. Zone 5 is your area to do it, and it's where you're also and this is important for a lot of people, it might be important for you, you can get a lot of land. You can get the property with the woods, with the scaping out grass pasture, with the area where you build your home deep in the woods and it's the dream home off the mile and a half drive. This is the area you would do it in. And to be frank with you, it's the rural, the fields, the small towns, but it's also growing just like the rest of Delaware. The, the beauty in all of this that we're looking at right now is all of it's working together in, in a synchronicity to grow the state. The beauty of it though is, with all these different working parts and components coming together, you as someone looking to move into Delaware can kind of look at this like the buffet line and think, what, what do I want? What do I want to put my name behind? What area do I believe is going to grow the most? Or what area do I believe is going to support my family the best? Or what area do I think my career has the best opportunity in? And, and guess what? I've said this before to several people and some people say, but then I explain a little bit more. Delaware can house your entire life cycle. Think about it. You got above the canal. That up north area is going to be your area where you have the high job market, the Russell and bustle, the big city area. You also have Kent County, Sussex County, which offer the farmland, small town, as well as suburban chill area. Then you have our relocation slash luxury market right down here in the south in Sussex. So you kind of got a mixture of all these different types of living. You can live on the farm or you can live luxury or you can go to college. There's a lot of different things you can do. And for someone looking to move in Delaware, like I said at the beginning, there's only real two questions you have to have. is where am I gonna move and why? And I hope that some of this information helped narrow down that why for you. Because that, for me, when I'm speaking with clients, and again, speaking to you as if you're one of our clients, one of my personal clients right now, I'd say the savviest people right now are not moving based off a dollar sign, they're moving off of their why, and they're moving off of their purpose and the reason they wanna to go to these areas. And so that's why breaking down all these details we feel is extremely important. And if you have any more questions, please shoot me a DM, leave a comment, I wanna have a discussion with you. Before you go, I got one more thing for you. If you've made it this far into the video and are seriously considering moving into Delaware, I have something specifically for you and I'd like to jump on the phone to tell you about it. And I, I mean, I want to jump personally on the phone, 15 minutes. I got the link right in the chat below in the description. Hit on that, pick a time, because I want to jump on and talk to you a little bit about what 2024 is going to involve and a program we now have for relocators that could save you some money. So. Hope this information did well for you. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we post. We work really hard on, as a team on these. And until next time, my name is Zachary Faust with The Loft Team, and I hope you have a great one.